In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy New Year to all of you. Happy New Year. And what a beautiful way to start off our New Year by celebrating Mary with the greatest of all of her titles. That title is Mary is the Mother of God. So what a great way to start off the New Year by coming together as our Perseverance family under the protection and the title of Mary who is truly the mother of God. She is the mother of the church and the mother of each and every one of us. So let's start off our conversation by inviting Mary to be with us. Mary is also known as we pray in the Hail Holy Queen. She's our life, our sweetness, and our hope. So we'd like to... <clears throat> start off placing this new year in the hands of Mary, in the heart of Mary. So Happy New Year to all of you, and let's pray together, asking for Mary's prayers and her blessings, as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. My friends, we're going to invite at the start of this new year our spiritual director to come to be with us. Our spiritual director is the Holy Spirit. And the whole the Sp Holy Spirit has also many beautiful titles. Holy Spirit is the paraclete. Holy Spirit is also known as the gift of gifts. Holy Spirit is also known as the sweet guest of our soul. Holy Spirit is also known as the counselor Holy Spirit is also known as the Consoler. And in the words of St. Paul, Holy Spirit is our spiritual master. He's our spiritual master. And as St. Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 8, we really don't know how to pray as we ought but the Holy Spirit intercedes with ineffable groans so that we can say, Abba, Abba, which means Daddy or Father. So let's uh, beg the Holy Spirit as we start this new year to give us a lot of light in our intellect and the fire of divine love to burn within our hearts. As we pray, come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and enkindle within us the fire of your divine love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Now shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O oh God, who did instruct the hearts of your faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. 
Saint Michael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Raphael, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. All God's angels and saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So we wish you all a Happy New Year to all of you. And as a note of encouragement, as always, I will be celebrating my Mass, and I'll pray for all of you in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And, yes, as a New Year's gift, I would like to place all of you and your loved ones on the altar when they celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And... Of course, the Mass is the, is the greatest of all prayers. Thank all of you who are, are posting Happy New Year. So Happy New Year to all of you who are tuning in now. And, and that, as I was saying, I'll be praying for you in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Yesterday when I celebrated Mass, I just had a, a small private Mass. I, I prayed in reparation for all of our past sins that God would have mercy, mercy on us. And thanksgiving for the many blessings that God has given to us. But also that God would bless this year. I pray that this year that all of you would be blessed with especially a deeper friendship and love toward Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Because when we say Happy New Year, uh, a secular way of interpreting it is that you'll be prosperous, you'll have no problems, your health will be perfect, people will be smiling at you, uh, your bank account will go up, you'll get raises. So when you say <coughs> Happy New Year, in the secular sense, that's usually the, the idea that that conveys. But for us, a good year is if that year we have drawn closer to God. That's right. A good year is a year in which we're drawn closer to God. If we can honestly say the past year we've drawn closer to God. It was a good new year. And we want to pray that this year we would draw closer to God. What better way than to draw closer to God through the, through the intercession of Mary under the title of Mary being the mother of God. So I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to pray for your families, that your family, your loved ones would also come to the awareness that true happiness in this life, as well as in the life to come, can only become a reality if we are drawn closer to God. I repeat that true happiness in this life as well as the life to come, will only become a reality if we draw closer to the source of all life, truth, peace, and happiness, and that is God himself. And lastly, even though this is the first day of the year, it will be the last day for some people throughout the world. 
I repeat, even though this is the first day of the new year, it will be the last day for some people. Let's pray that these people throughout the world that will be dying today, let's pray especially for those who are who are possibly not prepared for this momentous time in their lives, that through our prayers that they would turn and beg for God's mercy. Through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So those are my intentions I'd like to offer as we start off this new year in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, which of course, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is the greatest of all prayers. That could be an intention for all of us this year to participate more fully, actively, and consciously in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Daily Mass and daily communion, if possible. And if you're already in the habit of going to daily Mass and communion, try to fortify, trying to fortify your, your Mass and your communions. All right, today, today being January 1st, the church celebrates this new year by honoring Mary, Mary as the mother of God. Now think of all the titles that you could receive. Many of you could be given the title, your mother, you are wife, you are maybe grandmother, you are possibly sister, your daughter, your friend, your worker. All those are different titles for all of you, but all those titles point to the same person. Now, Mary has many beautiful titles. And in my book, The Marian Compendium, that was published in October, at the end of the book, there are Mar Marian prayers, among which would be the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary has many titles. Mary is the mystical rose, she's a tower of ivory. Mary is also known as the virgin of all virgins. Mary is also known as the gate of heaven. These are all beautiful titles for Mary. Many of them are very poetic, very mystical, and many of them are very biblical. However, it has to be said that of all the titles, of all the titles that we can give to Mary, the greatest of all titles is Mary being the mother of God. That's right, of all the titles. And if you pray the Litany of Loretto, you're going to have a whole series of invocations or titles given to Mary. And by far the greatest title Invocation given to Mary is, Mary is the mother of God. So, that being the case, <clears throat> honoring Mary, in my book that I published, my book includes various ideas on Mary called the Marian Compendium. I have Marian devotions, I have Marian apparitions, but also I have an explanation of the Marian dogmas. There are four Marian dogmas, and they would be 
the Immaculate Conception, Mary's perpetual virginity, Mary's divine maternity, and Mary's assumption into heaven. Those are the four Marian dogmas. And the dogma is a truth that has been revealed by Holy Mother Church that we have to believe if we're going to be noble sons and daughters of Mother Church. The Immaculate Conception, meaning that Mary was conceived without the stain of original sin. God preserved Mary from the stain of original sin. We pray that prayer that is inscribed in the miraculous medal. O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us, have recourse to thee. And the poet William Wordsworth, an English poet, has penned these words in honor of Mary. Mary is our tainted nature's solitary boast. This man was not even a Catholic, but an English poet. Mary is our tainted nature's solitary boast. Then Mary's perpetual virginity. Mary's perpetual virginity means that Mary was virgin always, before the birth of Christ, during the birth of Christ, and after the birth of Christ, she maintained her virginity. Then the last Marian dogma was actually proclaimed in the year 1950 by Pope Pius XII. Pope Pius XII in Munificentimus Deus, his papal bull, in which the Pope proclaimed that Mary, at the end of her er earthly pilgrimage, was taken up into heaven in body and soul. This is Mary's last. And every year we celebrate the Assumption of Mary, August 15th. That takes us to the Marian dogma and feast day that we celebrate today. Today we celebrate Mary as Mother of God. And St. Pope Paul VI also proclaimed today to be the Universal Day of Peace. How important is that we pray for world peace, peace in our country, peace in our churches, peace in our families, and peace in our own hearts. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me, as the song goes. So what do we mean by Mary being the mother of God? Okay, this uh, Mary being Mary, the mother of God, that's uh, what we celebrate today, Mary, the mo mother of God. What does this mean? Mary, the mother of God. This uh, dogma was proclaimed in the year 431. It was proclaimed in one of the ecumenical councils ecumenical councils and it was the ecumenical council of Ephesus in the year 431 which according to tradition is where Mary lived with Saint John the Evangelist after Christ descended into heaven Now, thanks to the work of St. Cyril of Alexandria, this was proclaimed. 
because there were heretics proclaimed that Mary was not the mother of God. So very briefly, I'd like to just explain the whole meaning of Mary being the mother of God. To understand this, my friends, we have to have a basic understanding of what is called a basic understanding of what is called Christology. A basic understanding of Christology, and maybe the best way for me to do this is uh, is to give you a, a simple explanation of this, giving you simple ex explanation. Okay, so in Jesus, you have okay, you have two natures. Okay, you have what is called the divine nature, and then you have the human nature. So here you have it. In Jesus, you have the two natures. You have the divine nature, and then you have the human nature. The divine nature, the human nature. Okay, let's see if we can um, understand this. Okay, the divine nature and the human nature are united in, in one person. There it is, one person. And that one person is the second person of the Trinity. Okay, so far so good. How did this come about? Came about the, by, by, by the yes. So the union of the divine nature and the human nature came about by the yes of Mary. When Mary said, I am the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to the word. I am the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to their word. And what that's called, I'll give you two technical words, it's called the it's called the incarnation. <coughs> that's what it's called the incarnation. The incarnation took place when Mary gave her yes. And the 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 theologians if you want to be a theologian, know some technical word that the theologians, they call it the hypostatic union. <laughs> hypostatic union. Maybe you can see it better without my light on. Okay, let's just go through that. Jesus has two natures. The two natures are the divine, which means that Jesus is God. And the human means that he's man. They're united in the one person. That is the second person of blessed Trinity. Came about when Mary said yes. When she said, behold, I'm the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to that word. And with that, you have what's called the incarnation. The incarnation means the son of God. Jesus, the second person of Trinity, took on flesh in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that union, you see the divine and human, is called the hypostatic union. And this is what we celebrate today. So I've given you uh, just a brief, I've given you a brief uh, course or explanation of, of Christology. Of Christology. So, that's important that we understand that if we want to understand the whole meaning of the feast day we celebrate today.
so just to, just to go through that briefly, um, it's important that we have a, a good theological, Christological underpinning to what we believe. Mary, the mother of God. So Jesus is God. Jesus is the second person of the Blessed Trinity. He's Lord of Lord, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, as we pray in the, in the Creed, in the Mass. But in time, he will to come to be with us. As a result of the sin of Adam and Eve, called original sin, God decided to send his son to save us. So the Eternal Father sent his son to save us in a very cl close, intimate way to us because we are human persons. So I just sent his son and he came into the world in the way we come into the world through being by being born. The birth of Christ of Mary was a virgin conception and a virgin birth. That's different than us. So Mary, when she's conceived Christ, Mary is the mother of God. Mary, after the conception of Christ in her womb, that's called the that's called the virginal conception. Then Mary formed Jesus Christ within her womb for those nine months. And then we celebrate his birthday, December 25th, Christmas every year. So we, can, we celebrate <clears throat> Mary conceiving Christ every year, March 25th. March 25th is known as the Annunciation or the Incarnation. All right. So there's the explanation of what it means, Mary being the mother of God. My friends, the first reading today is taken from Numbers, and it's a passage on blessing. And it's the blessing from the book of Numbers. And I would like to, to read and offer you a special blessing through Mary. This will be the blessing I'd like to des descend upon all of you right now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you kindly and give you his peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites and I will bless them. So I'd like to invoke I like to invoke that blessing upon all of you right now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. I pray that through Mary, the mother of God, that this would be the best, this would be the best year in your life. Now, we do have a passage from St. Paul, it's short, on Mary, and it says, In the fullness of time, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. That's Galatians 4, verse 4 to 7. We, my friends, through baptism, through baptism, my friends, we are truly sons and daughters of God. 
We are truly sons and daughters of God, but also we are sons and daughters of Mary. That's right. So when we celebrate the feast day of Mary, the mother of God, In a very real sense, we're, we're celebrating the fact that we are sons and daughters of God, but also we're sons and daughters of Mary. Why? Because we belong to the mystical body of Christ. The mystical body of Christ is the church. That's right, the mystical body of Christ is the Catholic Church. Now, Christ is the head of the Church. And we are the members. Christ is the head. And we are the members, given that Mary is the mother of Christ. Therefore, we participate in this also by being members of the mystical body of Christ through our baptism. Now, biblically, biblically, this Mary's universal maternity was came about when Mary said yes to the angel, and she said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to the word. But in a very very clear biblical sense also, John chapter 19, when Jesus hangs on the cross and he looks beneath the cross and he sees the two he loves most, his mother and St. John the Evangelist. And he says, Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. From that moment, the beloved disciple took Mary into his home. took Mary into his home. And it also means that John took Mary into his heart. So in the person of St. John the Evangelist is present each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. So my friends, the gospel today is, is the shepherds. They go and haste to Bethlehem and they found Mary and Joseph and they found the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about the child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And it says, And Mary kept all these things, reflecting them in her heart. And eight days were completed for his circumcision, and he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So there we have the gospel for today. The child Jesus with Mary and Joseph. The shepherds rush in haste. They see the child Jesus in the arms of Mary, they're filled with joy and they go and they tell many people about this great mystery of the birth of Christ, of Mary. So the gift that Mary gave to us, the gift that Mary gave to us is the greatest of all gifts. So this is the eighth day of the octave of Christmas. When we think about a gift, when we think about giving gifts, normally we think about physical gifts, monetary gifts. That is the, the modern American mentality. Someone is going to give me a gift. There's going to be something physical, something I can handle, something I can hold, or something I can put in the bank. But Mary gave us something much greater. Mary gave us her son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
That's right. Mary gave us something much greater. She gave us her Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So what I'd like to do, my friends, with you is as we start off this new year with the Blessed Virgin Mary, I would like, my friends, to unite with you in suggesting, proposing certain gifts that we can give to Mary. Mary has given us the greatest of all gifts. She's given us Christ. What should be our response? I'd like to give you some suggestions. The first thing I would like to suggest is to start off our day <clears throat> by consecrating ourselves to Mary. Soon as I hear the alarm clock in the morning, I say my act of consecration to Mary, and I say, O oh, Signora mia, O oh, Madre mia, jo me fresco di todo ti, and pray when me feel all affected to consagre me sedi, me socos, me soides, me lingua, me corazon, in una palabra toda me ser, ya que soy toda tuya. Madre bondad, guarda me, defiende me, I'm a cause of possession to you. Amen. I happen to have it memorized in Spanish, so I say that in Spanish. And then what I do is I take my scapular. I take my scapular and I hope and pray that all of you, all of you are wearing your scapular. That's right, that all of you are wearing your scapular. Because the scapular that you wear is your external sign that you, you belong to Mary. You're in the school of Mary. You're in the heart of Mary. You're being protected by Mary. So wear your scapular. And then to kiss the scapular. Now every time you kiss the scapular, then the church offers us a an indulgence when we kiss the scapular. And the kissing of that scapular is a sign of our it's a sign of our, our love. It's a sign of our love for Mary. So by kissing it, we receive an indulgence. And what I do, this is a private practice that I've taught you before, and I invite you to do it if you like. Take the scapular and bless your forehead and then your lips, your tongue, your ears, and your heart. So that you'll be giving yourself totally to Jesus through Mary. So if you're not doing that, that gesture of offering to Jesus through Mary, start at the top of this new year. You might even end your day also by saying the act of consecration, Mary, and kissing the scapula. So you start your day and you end your day by that concrete gesture of giving yourself to Jesus through Mary. Okay, my second suggestion would be this year that you would apply your mind to reading to reading <clears throat> some good book or books on Mary. 
reading some good book or books on marrying. There are many out there. I would like to suggest The Glories of Mary by St. Alfonso Liguori, which is probably the greatest Marian masterpiece ever written. Then I would suggest also to read that document of John Paul II. It's called the Blessed, it's an apostolic letter, apostolic letter of John Paul II. It's called the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Rosary. That's an excellent treatise, easy to read and understand, not too long, where John Paul II explains the importance of the Rosary. And in this, John Paul II, he introduced the new mysteries called the, the Luminous Mysteries, the Mysteries of Light. And he insists that we pray the rosary, especially for two intentions. He wrote this apostolic letter shortly after the attack on the Twin Towers in New York City. And he said we should pray for world peace as well as for the family. For that reason, how how well the, it resounds those words of Father Patrick Payton. The family that prays together stays together, and a world at prayer is a world at peace. My third suggestion would be to purchase and to read my book, published by Tan, Tan Publishers, and it's called The Marian Compendium. In my book, I include Marian devotion, Marian doctrine, approved Marian apparitions, beautiful classical arts, and a treasure of Marian prayers. It's a complete compendium of Mariology, and I really believe that if you if you able to read this you will get to know Mary and love Mary all the more. I actually did a five-week course on this new book, and if you wanted to go into my website, you could actually find the five talks that I gave, and you can listen to the talks I gave. I gave a talk on the evolution of myself as a writer. I gave another one on the Marian on the Miraculous Medal. I gave another one on Our Lady Guadalupe. I gave one on Marian Dogmas. And then I gave the last one on how we can really promote Marian devotion, growing our own Marian devotion. So that's the second gift. So what I'm doing today, my friends, some of you are just Tuning in now, I'm talking about Mary, the mother of God, who we celebrate today, January 1st. And it makes it Mary gave us the greatest gift. The greatest gift was our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And what I'm trying to develop in my, my talk this morning is the gifts that we can give to Mary. I said the first thing we want to do is we want to consecrate ourselves to Mary and kiss our scapular, giving ourselves to Jesus through Mary. Then I just mentioned three readings that we can do in honor of Mary. The Glories of Mary by St. Alphonsus Liguori. Then John Paul II's Apostolic Letter the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Rosary. Lastly, I mentioned to read my own writings, the Marian Compendium. So get to know Mary better in honor of 
her feast day today, solemnity today, Mary, the mother of God, the Theotokos. My third suggestion would be the Oblates have a saying, and the saying is Maria Cogita and Maria Invoca. The Oblates, Maria Cogita, Maria Invoca. That's Latin for to think about Mary and to invoke Mary. Now what I would suggest is that all of us be like Juan, we all be like Juan Diego. That's right. We all become like Juan Diego. In this sense. How many of us go through life without any problems? How many of us go through a year without any problems? How many of us go through a month without any problems? How many of us go through a week without any problems? How many of us go through a day without any problems? So I've gone from the general to the particular, as they say in philosophy. We all have problems. We all have problems. And some of us have many problems. Well, instead of allowing our problems to overwhelm us, to drown us. So instead of allowing these problems to overwhelm us, to drown us, One of you has just said, what is my website? It's www.fatherbroom.com if you want to just click into my website. It's my website. I've got blogs. I've got videos. I've got podcasts. I've got Spanish. And I've got English. Actually, you can find thousands of things there, whatever you like. You want to read an article? I write articles. If you want to listen to maybe a podcast, if you're taking a walk in the park, you can listen to an audio version. If you want to see a video, this is Facebook, but and then it'll be po posted on Facebook, and then it's transferred to my YouTube channel. So you can invite this new year, why don't you all invite new people to become, some of your friends to be, to become part of our, to become part of our, uh, our family, part of our online family. It is a family. And uh, we're praying for each other. We're trying to encourage each other. And today, if you're just, uh, Viridiana and company are just tuning in, I'm, ex I'm explaining what are the gifts that we can give to Mary? And the gift that I'd like to offer to Mary with all of you today is in honor of Juan Diego, in honor of Juan Diego, But just you're able to see here's here's here is a, a little card on my website uh, business card so you see below it says fatherbroom.com www.fatherbroom.com yes 
And I did mention, as Laurie's pointing out, San Alfonso Liguori. Yeah, that it's written by St. Alphonse. It's called The Glories of Mary. And Laurie and company, what it is, is, is St. Alphonse takes the Hail Holy Queen. We pray, at the end of, we pray at the end of the rosary. And what he does is he takes just a word at a time and he explains it by uh, biblical references, the fathers of the church, the saints, So it's just a, it's a, it's a, probably the greatest work ever written on Mary would be The Glories of Mary by St. Alphonsus Liguori. So we want to get to know Mary better this year. We want to get to know and love her. Next Sunday, I'm actually going to Our Lady Guadalupe in, in East L.A. to give a five-week Marian consecration program in Spanish. If you like to come, if you if you if you're in the area of L.A. in Spanish. So let's get getting back to Juan Diego. Now as mentioned, we all have problems. We all have problems. But instead of allowing our problems to overwhelm us and to be drowned, so to speak, with our with our problems. Well, why don't we do this? Like Juan Diego, go to Mary and open up and talk to Mary about our problems. You're going to find that maybe your problem is not going to be solved right there and then, but you're not alone. You're not alone. Mary is your mother. Mary is your guide. Mary is our life, our sweetness, and our hope. Mary is our advocate. Mary is our intercessor. So, like Juan Diego, like Juan Diego, make sure that you go to Mary and you confide in her presence in your lives. So we, what we're doing, my friends, is we're, we're offering these gifts to Mary. Another thing we can do to honor Mary is by means of the Most Holy Rosary. Of all the prayers that we can say to Mary, the prayer that she loves most is the Hail Mary, and the title that she loves most is Mother of God. That's right. The prayer that she loves most is the Hail Mary, and even more so the Rosary, because in the Rosary you say the Hail Mary 50 times. 50 times. So, praying the rosary. When Our Lady of Fatima come, came in 1917, appearing to the three children, Lucia de los Santos, Francisco and Jacinta she actually appeared six times and every time that she appeared she said to the children as well as to the world Mary said pray the rosary Mary said, pray the rosary. She said it May 13th, which is the month of Mary, all the way up to October 13th, which is the month of the Holy Rosary. 
So the first apparition, the month of Mary, and the last apparition would be the month of the Holy Rosary. Mary insisted upon praying the Holy Rosary. And then she revealed, she revealed her name. She said, that she was the Lady of the Rosary. So how true, my friends, the family that prays together stays together. The family that prays together stays together. And a world at prayer is a world at peace. So my friends, those are a few gifts that we can give to Mary as we celebrate her feast day, Mary, Mother of God. Start off by consecrating yourself to Mary by wearing the scapular, kissing the scapular, and saying your act of consecration. Second, read up on Mary. Third would be, turn to Mary. Maria Kojita, Maria Invoca. Think about Mary, invoke Mary, especially when you're going through tough times. And finally, pray the Most Holy Rosary. Now, I'd like to end by giving you the blessing, which is the first reading today. I'd like to give you a blessing. This is the blessing that Moses gave upon the people, and I'd like to invoke this blessing upon all of you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace. And May Almighty God bless all of you and your family members this new year. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A happy and blessed new year to all you and your family members and all of us who are on the Perseverance family invite others to join us this new year.